Welcome back, everyone. Week three of the high school football season had it all, and in week four, we wanted more. Well, we got just that, and let's start things off with Thompson taking on Chelsea in 7A. 2-2 two two Thompson on the road against Chelsea, who is 1-3 on the year. Let's start this one in the third. Thompson up big, and the young gun Trent Seaborn, the eighth grader, finds KB Williams to make it 41-3. Yeah, they still had some offense left in them. Thompson looking for a little bit more later. The handoff to Dylan Campbell is coming your way as he weaves in and out. Yeah, gets past all the defenders. They can't tackle this kid for nothing. Thompson wins 48 to three. Here's Mark Freeman after the big win. I think it's just them coming together and finding out who, who are we, you know? I think we're finding out a little bit more every week about what our kids can do. They're finding out what they can do. And, and I think we've got to do a good job of putting our kids in, in the things they can do really good and the things we might've done in the past that we're not as good this year at, I put them things away and uh, create new things to do with this bunch. Now we head to the Hoover Bucks on the road at Hewitt Trustville. Game tied up at seven in the third. Hoover with Amari Williams in the Wildcat punches it in for the score. Hoover up 14 to seven in the third. Hoover though looking to add to that lead with a field goal attempt here. 38 yards, Peyton Argent, he's got the boot. Extending the lead 17 to seven in the fourth and that was the final score from there. Here is Coach Waldrop after the gutsy win from the Bucks. I think you know, we're playing kind of off the script, it looks like. Not much in the first half, did what we had to do in the second half. Proud of our guys to be able to go on the road, play a good football team, well-coached football team, a playoff football team, and just, you know, excited to get the win. We're talking about playoffs already. Well, <laughs> Spain Park and Vestavia Hills playing off tonight. It was a field goal affair for the Rebels until the third quarter. John Paul Head runs ahead for Vestavia's first touchdown of the game. It's 16-0 at that point, and he's not done yet. John Paul, again, rushing to the outside, gets in for another score. It's 23 zip still in the third, and they still weren't done. Defense forcing the strip sack here. It's recovered for a touchdown. Rebels up 30 to nothing as they go on to win 36 to 7. We've got some more scores headed your way. Hartsville and Gadsden City playing. Hartsville gets the win there. Tuscaloosa County gives Oak Mountain another heartbreaker for the second straight week, 34 to 31, the final. Well, one of the top teams in the state right now is Clay Chalkville, and tonight was a challenge in 6A for them. A battle of the unbeatens with the Cougars facing the center point Eagles. Let's get to those highlights. Clay Chalkville running out with all the hopes of getting another win tonight. Fourth and goal here for center point and Jabari Collier was able to get in for the touchdown center point leading seven to nothing at this point. Clay Chalkville answers back though when Kamari McClellan finds Jalen Bakwi for the 18 yard touchdown failed extra point center point leads seven to six. But next drive for Clay Chalkville, Kamari McClellan hits Mario Craver for a 35 yard score. That puts them up 12 to seven, another field extra point, but the Cougars go on to win big, 56 to 19, the final. Now over to Carver versus John Carroll. We're gonna start this one off with the little cheerleaders giving their spirit here ahead of the game. Javaris Wade though hits Jamari Owens for a touchdown, beautiful pass and catch there. The Carver defense though, is going to be doing big things in this one. But first, we got John Carroll getting in on some scoring action. So they hope, but they don't, because it's a sack for number three. Carver all over on that side of the ball as they go on a win by a slim 20 to 14. Now to Coach Carson after this one. That's what I tell them all the time. Like, you got to have program changing moments when you can win a game in the last seconds or keep a lead. Those are program moments, and that was a program moment at the end of the game. We love to see a coach. Well, some more scores for you. Aniata taking on Fultondale here. Aniata's second play from scrimmage. That's where we're going to start the action. Landon Abernethy hands off to Demarion Bothwell. We call him Fluff, who rips off a 75-yard touchdown run. This kid putting up the stats each week. Aniata up quickly, 7 to nothing with that quick speed there. But their defense too much for Fultondale. Darius Davis sacked for a loss here by Josiah Coover. The Redskins' next possession, running back to Mariam Bothwell for another score. This one, just 25 yards, but give the kid a break. Aniato wins 51-13, to the final. Taking a look at some more scores around the region, Calera wins 38-14, to while the Homewood Patriots get another dub, 31-24, to the final. Then we have Pinson Valley, no problem there with Oxford on the road, and Aniston all over the White Plains. 
Well, Jack Hayes of Piedmont High School entered into week four and second all time in passing touchdowns after passing one Bo Nix just last week. He was two touchdowns away from breaking the all time Alabama record for touchdowns scored. Well, let's get to the action. Tonight, his Bulldogs are playing Ohachi. Here's Hayes tying the record with the score right here in the second quarter as his team goes up 14 to nothing. Not much later, he throw this dime. And this is where he could t break the record right here. It's a great pass and catch, but unfortunately our poor connection was not great. We can't see it there, but trust us, it's a touchdown as he broke the record and his team would go on to win 42 to 14. Congrats to him and the Bulldogs. Well, that wraps